How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about uh, Jair Brown and some of the younger safeties who we haven't seen. Obviously, we saw a bunch of the veteran or uh, Brisker and Sutherland a lot last year. Uh, but can you tell us about the young guys and how they're doing? Thank you. Yeah, so Jair, who we 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 go, you know, we call him Tig. Um, Tig's had a, a really good spring. I think he's leading us right now in uh, uh, in turnovers. And uh, he's just much more comfortable and, and much more confident, which you know, we typically see in second-year players, whether you're a second-year high school or second-year junior college player. Um, he's an awesome, he's an awesome young man in general. He's very appreciative of the opportunity being here at, at Penn State. Uh, you know, he's from Trenton originally, um, and obviously Lackawanna, you know, really, really prepared him. So he's. He's kind of standing out right now. Um, Enzo's a guy, obviously, you know, that that we're excited about to take the next step. And we need him to take the next step. Um, And then, you know, obviously, Tyler Rudolph is the guy uh, that really, from the time we recruited him athletically, is a guy we've been really excited about. And I I think this is going to be an important year for him and an important offseason. And I've seen a lot of strides in him, you know, both – physically, mentally, and emotionally, and, and, and been, and have been pleased there. Um, you know, so it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's an interesting group and, you know, it's a good group. Um, you know, we got to keep challenging those guys to get better. I think Dexter, uh, Dex, uh, Anthony Poindexter, um, has done a really good job. He's brought a bunch of energy at practice. The guys really like him. The staff really like him. He's been a really good fit for us. You know, and it just seems like uh, it seems like everybody's kind of feeding off of it. You guys, Will Bourne, and then Audrey Snyder. Hey, James, thanks for the time as always. Um, you as well. Thank you. What have you noticed with the quarterback room, particularly with Robeson, is, is he's potentially maybe getting more opportunities? What have you kind of noticed with really all three of those guys? Yeah, I think like it is for a lot of positions, but probably magnified at the quarterback position is um, it's consistency. You know, Taekwon has really done some nice things since he's been here and this spring as well. Um, but it's about it's about consistency, you know, and, you know, most of these guys make really good, you know, flash plays or, um, you know, big a big time throw or decision or whatever it may be uh but it's really about consistency it's kind of like the kicker that can make the the 60 yarder um every once in a while but doesn't consistently hit the 40 yarder and that that's what you need so i think uh taekwon is showing more of that right now uh Veyu, i think is is pretty far along you know for a true freshman in terms of uh, in terms of being able to operate what we're asking them to do um, but you know, you know, I think that's obviously, you know, based on your question, that's an important, um, that's an important thing for us to figure out is, um, you know, we got to make sure we have a two and a three, uh, you know, that we feel good about. And also you'd like to get to a point where your two is truly competing and pushing your starter. You know, so all, all those things are, are important. And I think this spring will help with that. But but if I had to guess that that'll that'll go into the into fall camp as well. Audrey Snyder and then Ben Jones. James, going off the quarterbacks, uh, what has Sean done to impress you this spring? You know, he's just he's a vet. You know, he's a smart guy. He asks really good questions. You know, he's had a lot of success and he's had a lot of adversity, and with that. Uh, comes, you know, comes maturity, comes wisdom, comes experience. Um, you know, he's a guy that really wants to be good and, and really works at it, both both mentally and physically. I think Coach Yursich has been pretty impressed with him uh, in terms of his ability to take information from the meetings and, and transfer it to the field. You know, but I also think the reality is, you know, Obviously, there's packaging that's different, but everybody's kind of running the same plays. 
and their concepts, their horizontal stretches, their high lows, their, their vertical, uh, you know, vertical passing game. There's the RPOs, um, you know, there's, there's those types of things. And Sean's kind of experienced those and got a pretty good understanding of those. And all of that knowledge, he's able to kind of put things into, into families. And, uh, you know, again, like I said, everybody's kind of running the same plays. It's, it's how you package them all together. Uh, but he's, he's been impressive so far. Ben Jones, then Elton Hayes. Hey, James, how's it going? Good, Ben. How are you? Good. I'm good. Can you quantify the value of a regular practice or scrimmage compared to the blue-white game? And how much do the first three weeks of your season impact how you use your time between now and, and that first game? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think obviously the, the practices are extremely valuable uh, in the spring. You know, I think we've talked about this before. You know, we didn't get spring ball last year and a lot of other programs did. Um, and there's value in that. You know, practice matters or, or you wouldn't do it. Um, so, you know, for us, you know, just being really strategic about our practices this spring, uh, about using, you know, using all 15 um, you know, to get better and really challenge, challenge our guys and, um, and also, and also be smart in, in how we do it in terms of trying to keep everybody out there as much as we possibly can, um, you know, from a practice perspective in terms of, you know, in terms of how hard we push them and how many reps and how many periods that we, that we do. Um, and then I think to your point, you know, um, you know, we got a, we got a pretty challenging, uh, early part of our schedule. Uh, not only from a Big Ten perspective, but also from an out-of-conference perspective as well. Uh, I think it's I think it's a motivator for our guys, um, you know. And you know, we're, we're going to find out. You know, we're going to have a pretty good idea of who we are very early and, and be tested. Um, you know, in some in some ways, you know, probably in some you know, you can make some 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 uh, comparisons to. You know, maybe the 2016 season, you know, where, you know, we, we faced a pretty tough schedule very early on and we're able to grow from that as the year went on. Elton Hayes. Then oh, oh, hey, ben, hopefully not the same results at the beginning, of, the beginning of the 2016 season. <laughs> Just to be clear there. <laughs> Elton Hayes uh, and then Greg Pickle. Hey, Coach, hope you're doing well this evening. You as well, Elton. Coach, um, yesterday we spoke with Tariq, and uh, from a player's perspective, he gave us the value. He told us the value of what it was, to what it's like to have a guy like Coach Smith around, who's a guy who's been here since his first day on campus when he was 18 years old. Uh, from your your um, perspective as a head coach, um, with bringing in some new guys over the past couple of seasons, what is Coach Smith's value and and kind of having that continuity in his um, just his presence with on um, the coaching staff? Yeah, you know Terry's been. You know, he's been great. You know, he's a letterman. Um, you know, he's three generations Penn State. His dad went to Penn State. He went to Penn State. His son and daughter went to Penn State. Um, so he knows this place inside and out. He knows the history. He knows the tradition. Um, you know, he, uh, he's got great perspective on things. And I think the other thing with Terry you know, his experience as not only a college coach, but also a high school coach, I think is, is, is really valuable. I think it's also interesting, you know, very similar to coach Galt, you know, um, not only is he a coach, but he's also been the parent of a division one athlete, you know, um, and a, and both of them have been division one athletes that have come through our program and our style of program. So, you know, I think there's just so many different perspectives on that. And then I think the other thing with Terry is Terry's a truth, a truth teller, you know, Terry's going to tell me the truth. Um, you know, when I ask Terry a question, you better be ready for the answer, uh, which I love. I don't want a bunch of yes men around me. And Terry's, Terry's going to tell you his opinion. And he does the same thing with the players, you know, um, you know, I think a mistake that sometimes coaches make is they try to sugarcoat things for the players. And, you know, players need to get that constructive criticism and that feedback 
So they know their strengths and they know their weaknesses and then how they're going to work on their, their weaknesses to fix them. That's how you get better. And I think, I think Terry's done a really good job in his room of developing that type of expectation and that, that type of standard. I think we got a chance to be really good, um, you know, at corner and in the secondary. And I also think it's, it's exciting because when you, when you develop that over time, those veterans are able to kind of teach the young guys, you know, how we do things at Penn state. And, um, Terry's done a really good job of creating that culture within his room. So I I think there's value in that. There's value from a letterman's perspective. There's a value, you know, in the WPIL and and, and 412, Um, you know, that part of the state, there's tremendous value in that. He's got instant credibility. It also seems like, you know, I I know there's six degrees of separation, but I think like in Pittsburgh, there's like two degrees of separation, like, you know, he knows everybody or is related to everybody or has a connection. There's always, there's some, you guys would love it. I wish you guys could be there. There's always some heated, heated arguments slash discussions between Dion Barnes and Terry Smith. So anything that's good in football based on Dion's perspective comes out of the Eastern side of the state and Philadelphia. And they go back and forth. They name somebody from Western PA. Well, he's got someone from Eastern PA. Well, state championships, uh, college football hall of famers, uh, they're constantly going back and forth. And it's also kind of like the young, the young coach and the old coach kind of going back and forth. So that that's been fun, but, but Terry's Terry's been great. Got time for two more. We'll start with Greg Pickle and then we'll finish with Nate Bauer. Good evening, James. You mentioned right. that you tracked uh, Mike Yurcich for a long time, and now that you've been through a week and a, you know one or two, I guess, practices with him, what has that fit been like both from you and the coaching staff, and then with what he's, what have you seen from the players as well, getting to know him and his coaching style? Yeah, it's 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 probably exactly what I thought it was going to be. You know, we we uh, obviously were involved with Mike. Um, you know, the last time this thing you know, came open. Um, And, and, you know, obviously, you know, me and Mike Gundy worked together at the University of Maryland. So, you know, I got great history with him. Um, You know, was able to get feedback there. Uh, The head coach at Shippensburg, uh, where, where, you know, Coach Yersich really kind of got going. Uh, We worked together at James Madison. Mark Macheski, we worked together at James Madison. So I've known all about Mike and been tracking him for a while and, I've had some deep, you know, conversations with him and his family, and uh, and now getting him here, he's, he's he's what I thought. You know, he's an aggressive personality as a coach. He's an aggressive personality as a play caller. He has a proven track record of, of success, um, and kind of what he believes in, and who I would like to be stylistically. It aligns. You know, it aligns. Um, so, you know, he's got a, you know, almost a, a, a mad scientist, uh, kind of way about him, you know, which, which I like, um, there's, I don't think there's a play or a scheme that, that he doesn't like, you know, I, I got to kind of watch, you know, the staff will see something, you know, NFL cut up on a certain play that's been successful. And I'm almost whispering to him on the side, like, don't show Mike that, you know, cause, cause we'll have it in kind of the next day. Uh, but he's got a, he's got a really, you know, uh, good way about him. And he coaches the guys hard and he's aggressive on the field, but he's also aggressive in scheme. Um, you know, one of the things that's been good is I always manage kind of how training camp and how spring ball goes. And what I mean by that is, you know, on day one, you're not getting unbalanced and empty and all these non-traditional things. And on the defensive side of the ball, all these blitzes uh, on day one, you want to be able to start with a foundation. And that really kind of comes back from my time as the offense coordinator, first time offense coordinator at the University of Maryland. Don Brown was the defensive coordinator. 
who was the defense coordinator at Michigan and now is at Arizona. And Don ran a non-traditional defense from day one. And I just felt like you need to kind of build it. But what's nice is, you know, for Brent and for Mike, is Mike wants to see a little more pressure early on. Um, and by doing that, Brent's okay with getting a little bit more exotic formations early on. So probably being a little bit more aggressive than we've been in the past early on from an installation standpoint. And then typically what we do in spring ball is very similar to the model from an installation standpoint to what we do in training camp. So it allows us to kind of go through it, you know, tweak it and say, Hey, these are the things we like. These are the things that, that we want to do better. You know, I'm a big after after action plan guy, kind of like in the military. So after spring ball, we'll sit down and talk about what we like, you know, what we do different for next year. Same thing with training camp. We try to do that, you know, in every area, you know, in every department, you know, make sure that we, we follow back up and find areas that we could be better. So, um, you know, I've been impressed with him. It's been fun having him around. And, um, you know, I know his family is excited about being here as well. Nate Bauer, our last question. Hey, James. Hey, Nate. How are hey, you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Your box isn't lighting up, so usually when you talk, it lights up, and it's lighting up my box. I, uh, I'm i playing daddy duty here. So. Could, could you could you support the baby's head, please? You know, oh, geez. He's pretty much asleep. <laughs> so. yeah. All right, I'll talk quiet. I'm sorry. Things are working out. Anyway, um... Mike Miranda mentioned the other day. <laughs> Mike Miranda mentioned the other day that Phil Troutwine really likes to uh, to mix up his rotations. That he he throws three ends with the ones and ones with the twos. What what is the balance that you have to strike between uh, finding five and going with it uh, on the offensive line versus having that flexibility there? You look you look great as a dad, by the way. It it does not suit me. <laughs> I think it does, except for the lack of supporting the head. Besides that, I think it was perfect. As long as he's asleep. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, so you, you're talking about your your said that about Troutwine. You're saying uh, Mike Miranda said it about oh Troutwine. Yeah. So um, you know, I think a, a couple things. I think you know we got a pretty good idea of who's going to be in our two D. And I think there's some pretty good competition, you know, in that too deep where, you know, based on, you know, maybe a couple practices, the guy that's with the twos is really doing some nice things. And maybe the guy that's with the ones had an off day. And I think it's an important message that we send that, hey, you, you better come to work every single day and, and consistently do your job or we got somebody behind you that's that's pushing you you know, every single day to be your best and, and for us to be our best. So I think it's one thing to talk about. It's another thing to throw a guy in there and get him some reps. Uh, I think it, I think it, you know, it obviously I think helps us uh, create some of that true real depth guys that are getting opportunities to go against the ones. But I think it also sends a message, you know, that, that we have, we have good enough depth that, you know, you better come with the right mentality and the right approach every single day. And if not, there's somebody breathing heavily on your neck, you know, you know, itching and, and clawing and scratching for that opportunity. So, uh, you know, I think that's, I think that's been, been really good for us. And, you know, I think the other thing is trout. And, and like I said, with, uh, you know, with Dex, you know, they've done a really good job of you know, building the rapport and the culture, you know, with their position group. Uh, that those guys, you know, love practicing and getting better. I get, you know, I get some great messages from the parents. You know, um, Caden Wallace's dad sent me a, a really good message the other day. He was in town and took a couple of the guys out to dinner, and they were just all talking about how much fun they're having and how they're competing and and, and how much they're learning. And you know, so that that's important. You know, this this game is hard and it's tough and it's demanding, but you know, it should also still be some fun.